Welcome back, everybody. Episode 162 Chaps. Many cultures. Happy Friday, everybody. Or if you're watching this on the recording, happy whatever day. And have you ever been in a situation when you acted a certain way or said something your way and the person that you interacted with completely misunderstood, totally got it wrong, and you recognize what you did and what you said really affected, maybe even negatively affected the person you're interacting with when what your intention was was completely different from the impact it had. Yeah, we've been there too. Stay tuned. Back, sir. Brett, it was really not my intention to put you on the spot like this. No, well, I understand. You know, I understand, but do other people understand? Do you I really mean, we've, understand? We've been in the green room discussing it. We have context, we have background, we you know <laughs> I know you, right? Uh no, it's uh this, this is a great topic um, and often brought up by uh, great colleagues of ours, um, and I'm going to name her, Kelly McLeod Chingan, who does this all the time in her workshops. And uh, and, has, and every time I hear it, it is a reminder for me that it doesn't, to me, I just think it just doesn't matter what my intention is. That's, you know, I think it's pretty black and white, but I'm willing to be challenged on that. I mean... Yeah. Well, let's say this. Um, I know this is a tough one because I, I I I go through this often, even with people that are not from a different culture, from even people from within my close circles. And I would suspect some of you have similar experiences that you do or say something that a very close person they don't see your intent or they are impacted in a way you never wanted it to be. Mm -hmm. So in cultural training, we often say, make no assumptions. And if you make one assumption, then that, that everyone is acting with a positive intent. Nobody acts or very, very few people behave the way they do because they have a negative outcome in mind. Mm -hmm. So it is upon us, we often say in cross-cultural training to become good detectives what might the intention be of that behavior of these actions that are so uncommon, unfamiliar, uncomfortable to us at first, or in other words, I don't like how this impacts me. This behavior is not what I would like to see around me. And what could possibly be the positive, well-meaning intention of the person behaving that way? So that puts the onus on the person that is impacted, right? Mm. Um, the other, if you flip that coin, you could say, well, wouldn't it be smart for any of us that we interact with other people to, before we act or behave or say something, to consider possible impacts that may be aside from our intended way. It's it's a tough one. Who Who is to quote unquote blame or who should have the obligation to um, always be aware of the possible impacts our behavior could have? I, I'm not sure if I have a simple answer to that. No, I don't either. And I would say that if, um, well, here's another scenario. Uh, well, you hear all the time that, and especially now where there's a lot of kind of uh, tension in this discussion that people mm. say, well, you can't offend anybody anymore. You're not allowed to offend anybody anymore. Mm. I'm really going to struggle with that comment. I mean, the, the, the point is that the person, the people that are saying that are, are lamenting the fact that they can't say anything offensive. They're not allowed to say anything offensive. And my question is, 
Well, get, write me a list of the people you want to continue offending. Mm. Let's have a discussion with those people. Mm -hmm. Maybe if you have like the positive intention that you that you're describing, if you have that intention, then maybe they'll see it. Maybe they'll see your wonderful insights into why you really want to invest your time in making somebody feel like crap. Right. And that, okay. that's, that, that's my question about that. So, okay. So now we're talking about offending people. All right. Good. I, I hear well, you. I, I hear I, yeah. Well, I think, I mean, that's one example. I mean, something you mm. say, if it offends somebody, if it, if it, um, if it, if it is offensive to their being, like it might be a, uh, a slur that they're, they, yeah. they, they're uncomfortable with, something that, yeah. uh, that really that it is something from their past that has triggered a memory of of trauma or we, which exists in a lot of not just individuals but a lot of a lot of collective groups yeah. right um and whenever that, people say whenever people say that what, what was the line you said uh, what i i I can't offend anyone anymore. Yeah, that, you're not, you're, oh my god, my goodness! I'm not. You know, when they're confronted by yeah. saying, "Hey, you know, may you may, you know, that may have been to you appropriate for your grandfather, but right now it's not." And now, and the well, answer is, "Oh my god, I can't offend anybody anymore." You know? Well, when has it ever stopped you in the past? <laughs> um, so I, I want to say, you, you, those people who, who are, are saying that with that attitude or that mindset. I, I doubt that they're going to stop offending the very people right. they've been offending, and <laughs> they're just looking for a justification for their offensive behavior, or yeah. or some some allies who would go along with them to have their back because they're afraid to offend others by themselves, yeah. um, because then that that's when the bully is alone in the in the schoolyard. That's never a good thing for the bully. Um, but aside from the the actual well, that would be almost malintent, or that would that would come to the party with the intention of offense, right? Or with the intention of being opinionated without considering other points of view. Um, has it though happened that we come to the party with the best intentions and with open minds, hearts, ears, and eyes to accept other views and still acting upon our best intentions have an impact that we don't want has that yeah i know it happened to me right yeah oh yeah absolutely um but the, the, yes because this is a this is a long discussion i think we right. it, we can hash this out and uh, i'm um hello patricia uh yeah it, it's it's a it's just a funny discussion i mean when people like, and it, of course, the context of the communication is, you know, uh, important. If it's an if it's a written communication, or is it a uh, is it a verbal communication over a phone where somebody can't see your face, or is it a or or, or pick up your stop? Um, the, the other day, an example with um, uh, when I was in a car dealership and I was walking around looking at cars, and the person repairing my car couldn't find me. Um, the they called my wife by accident because that was a telephone number so of course uh not knowing the frame of mind or the style that 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 my wife you know communicates in which is you know why are you calling me right there there, there is an efficiency there is an efficiency that we've planned that we've got somebody representing our family at your organization why are you bothering me and so and then and then when the young gentleman came back to me and he he actually said to me oh, oh well i called your wife by mistake and she was quite rude she was, she was you know she was not very pleasant and and i thought well you know i know my wife she's wonderfully pleasant but of course when she's confronted with things that are not efficient and doesn't make sense to her and she's and that somebody it 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 comes off is why just tell me what are you doing what are you calling me for right which is that so her intent is not to offend it, it, certainly in that case but of course without the knowledge of the cultural style of what you know, like we talked about yesterday style or substance then you know that person I, I could see might take that as well you know i was just actually trying to help i'm trying to you know he his intent you know, is, is to help too. So there's a disconnect here. There's a disconnect and they are misunderstandings and, yeah. and, and that kind of thing. But I would say, and I would, you know, and I would say to my, would say it publicly. I would say to my wife, you know, some, well, just going to understand that he called, he was just trying to help. Right. 
So your intent of just, you know, getting him to do his job uh, in is seems good to you, but he probably did take it. Um, you know, Midwestern American young fella, you know, he's 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 friendly, he's trying to be helpful. <laughs> Midwest nice, right? And now he's going, what the hell? You know, my <laughs> my my you know. Now you 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 shared parts of that story with me earlier, and it also sounded like this young fella from the car mechanic shop uh, was a bit um in in his male stereotype of uh, talking yeah. down to a female, what do you know about the car? I need to talk to your husband, kind of way, right? It, they, they, he actually did uh, when he, because I was digging into it, and when he actually tried to explain to me, he was trying to justify his. Well, you know, I mean, I'm trying to explain to her. You know, I'm trying to do this. I'm trying to do that. Well, you don't have to explain it to her. You know, I mean, she understands what it is. She knows what a car is. <laughs> it's, it's not, you know. It, she's an intelligent, might more, might more, I said, she's got more brains than me, dude, you know, like maybe you should talk to her about it and explain it to her because that would actually build your skill set. <laughs> so um, the only saving grace then we have, if, if I hear you, would be to when we recognize that we inadvertently had a different, maybe negative impact with our good intentions that we own it, that we recognize it, that we address it, that we acknowledge it and say, oops, I think I may have expressed myself in a way that you didn't like or that hurt you or that was inappropriate. So um, excuse me, so to say, own up, have the vulnerability to accept or to, to take ownership of the situation and to say i'm i'm sorry i may have misspoken or i have may, may have expressed myself in a way that offended you right mm -hmm. so let me rephrase it or how can i how can i make amends so to say i think the th that is one of the the core elements i believe of peacemaking and reconciliation is to acknowledge the pain of the victim and I'm not saying that your wife or the mechanic were victims, but when I use the word, word victim, I mean those who have been negatively impacted. And there's a scale from f having a feeling of uh, having talked to an unpleasant human being on the phone to um, having experienced pain, suffering, killing, right? I'm, I'm the, I guess that's the bandwidth. Yeah. Um, maybe there's more, you educate me. Um, but without acknowledging the pain of the victim, whatever our good intentions were, or maybe we may have had good intentions, without acknowledging the pain of the victim, there is no peace, there is no reconciliation. And yes, I'm gonna drag this again into the German history, um, but that's the lesson that I learned personally, right? There's no other lesson I can bring up. So maybe others have other insights around that, I'm, I'm sure in, in Vietnam, Cambodia, or in Rwanda, or in other areas of, of genocidal activities that they may have lessons learned from that. But the, the gift of reconciliation that Germany of today has with Israel and the, the people of Jewish uh, faith around the world is because by and large, Germany accepts and acknowledge and, and um and does its best to understand the pain of the victims mm -hmm. i'm not saying there was positive intent in, in the way that my country acted back then but even that there was even no positive intent. but the there's still a heavy heavy impact and mm -hmm. the only way out of that mess the only way to for future generations to be with each other again is to acknowledge the pain of the victim yeah. And when that doesn't happen, then the impact will linger and will grow ulcers and the wound is not going to heal. That's that's how I look at it. That's my belief system. Maybe maybe, maybe I'm off a bit here, but that, that's, I think, the, the core to reconciliation is acknowledgement of pain. And, and I'm certainly not a psychologist, but I think that, you know, I, I kind of read about a little bit about this yesterday 
in a psychological way, it's kind of, it was even brought up. And one thing I read that it is the height of privilege to actually be then offended that you, that to be possibly confronted by the fact that you've offended somebody, right? To say, yeah. you know, the push back against it and say, well, it wasn't my fault. It wasn't my intent that, you know, you misunderstood. A lot of apologies are coined in this way, aren't they? Mm. You know, well, I'm sorry if you were offended. Well, you know, yeah. I mean, the, 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 why not just say, you obviously are offended. I have really done something, and how would it? And I think, and we've got some people here on this, uh, like Patricia, Kelly. Yeah. You know, all these people say, you know, what's wrong with saying I have? Obviously, what I have said, what I have done, my actions have 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 impacted you in a negative way. I would love to know what is the best way. What is the what is a different way that I could have approached that? Said that. Um, you know, express my feelings. Uh, these are these are interesting. These are just deeper discussions that I probably don't have the brains to to, to get into. And uh, as as um, uh, Patricia here says, American English present, I don't give a something, right? Um, a hoot. I don't give a hoot. I don't give a. Don't give a hoot. Yeah, just. I don't yeah. give a penny. I don't give a. Do I don't give a cup of coffee. Good? I don't right. know. Do you think it's directness or meanness? Right? Is that and I and I'm hope I'm you know Patricia's not here, but I mean just uh, to to say it. But I mean, is that like if you just say, look, I just don't give a damn. I don't give a hoot, you know, about about this, that, or the other thing. And then do do certain cultures then say, well, what does that mean? You just don't give a hoot about anybody else but yourself. You know, that is Could that be, which yeah. is a very individualistic uh, way of looking at it. Whereas somebody from a collectivist. Uh, side of society that's you know it's a tighter society that follows the kind of rules a little bit more says that just seems a little bit uh you know a little bit offensive right maybe that My, that's, uh, uh, we're, we're teaching a we're teaching a uh, a communications class this weekend and there's one of the one of the axioms one of the uh, core principles of of our teaching is the meaning of any communication is the response that you receive so the meaning uh, or the yeah. result of communication is not your intent the meaning of the communication is the response that you receive and if the response is oh i'm offended or i'm impacted in this or the other way this is how whatever you did landed on my end so i'm going to respond a certain way that response is the meaning you just created with your communication so if that's not the response you want, mm. then maybe you have to adjust the way you sense it. Yeah. Because if, if people don't like what you do or say, um, then maybe that's a feedback for you. It's not failure. You didn't fail in communicating. That's feedback, how your way of being shows up in the world. So if that's not what you would like to show up as, well, change it. I mean. But what what are the options? You can you can continue being as you are and potentially negatively impacting, offending, annoying people, and that will be your outcome. Happy Friday to you. Or you want different results. Well, you just got the feedback. This is what happened. So maybe do something else next time. I think that's what's frustrating to me when you talk to put when when you confronted with somebody who says, I'm just gonna say what I feel say what i mean and who cares if people are offended um and i go well then you're constantly getting this feedback you're constantly getting this negative feedback which can't be good for you you can't make you feel good that everybody is pushing back against you with everything you say right. why not have why not kind of say learn from it and go this feedback is important right, right. even the big the big social media star gary vaynerchuk says you know trolls haters he 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 dismisses them out of hand, but he actually listens to what they say. Yeah, and that's a funny that's a funny thing to 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 talk about, right? He he says, you know, maybe somewhere in there, somebody's giving you some feedback where you think, well, okay, maybe there's maybe there's a different way I could have said it, right? Um, I I think, I, I think that this, this is one of the fallacies of the internet age, so to say. Um, yeah. it, it is often perceived that up until we had this tool we were subject to uh, some sort of elites who control what the mainstream opinions are or what can be said and what will be heard because there were limited distribution channels. Now, 
everybody and their uncle has a microphone and feels and a camera look at us um i'm not your uncle by the way um <laughs> so everybody has a mic and a camera and even some lighting and things they have they need to be heard just because yeah. we're saying something doesn't mean that anyone should listen to us luckily we have a handful of people who like what we do but we don't have we're not entitled to an audience none of you are right so that's one of the the fallacies i think of the internet age that everybody thinks well i i i have the mission to send something and therefore i should be heard and the way i do it is is valid because look at me it's on youtube it is therefore it's legit um yeah. and i think that that if if we if we were to remind ourselves that every action has a reaction that's plain simple physics um then we might consider our the, the energy that we send differently and maybe maybe we're coming back to that. maybe the pendulum has been swinging um enough now right so i mean I, I, you could draw a political a parallel here the pendulum swung as far as january 6 and people felt entitled to their opinion to express it violently on the steps of uh, the United States Parliament building or inside the Parliament building. Yeah, sure, you, you feel entitled to have that kind of opinion. Um, that was irony, by the way. Um, may, maybe the pendulum has swung enough and we're, we're gonna find a new balance, who knows? Um, but I, I grew up differently and then I don't wanna sound like my old uncle, oh, back in the old days. Um, <laughs> But I, I strongly believe that any communication, if it wants to be successful and efficient, needs to consider all parties involved. And if you're not considering the response as the feedback, then you're going to be out on an island and everybody is to themselves. So, mm. Mm. yeah. Is that German, German irony? Is that an irony? <laughs> I don't know. I have to ask Patricia about that. I'm not sure. But, as as every time as always we appreciate your comments and thank yeah. you for watching today and yes maria armington um the feedback that i give you is that i like you very much even though i don't know you but you called my concept brilliant so my feedback to you is you're awesome <laughs> I'm not sure if that was your intention <laughs> that's right we are nothing but grateful for everybody who turns up here every day to listen to our bloviating um it is bloviating oftentimes and uh you know and we really are grateful to be able to be able to do this um and you know again we certainly have said a lot of things over the last 160 episodes and had a lot of people on that have uh, expressed their opinion and things like that and that's uh and that's something that we value and are very grateful for but does it mean we're always right and we no, always want to hear from you if we have if we if there is a better way that we can say things we want to learn this is what this is much about learning for us as it is that we hope we can pass on some nuggets of knowledge from our experience uh, nuggets of gold bars of knowledge yeah maria th oops sorry no, I think no, we no, both no. on the same thing so maria says the meaning destroys relationships the meaning in quotation marks destroys relationships burns bridges there's a power element here what i say is the only truth and you should hear it. yes i agree yeah. with you maria thank you and my friend eric eric goodman man i haven't seen or heard from you in a while <laughs> discovered the show great to have you eric excellent excellent and to all of you a happy weekend yes thank yes. you wonderful Episode 160 brett parting words ah uh, you know Go out there with that in the good intent. Go out there with a the good intent. Say what you say what you want to say. Listen to the feedback. Value the feedback. Be grateful for the feedback, even when it's negative, because we can all learn from the wonderful people around us. Um, and uh, and that's that's basically it. Have a wonderful weekend, sir. You do the same. Enjoy your lives. Enjoy a few days off if you can. And we'll see you back on Monday. Bye bye now. Bye.